I'd like an Atari 2600 system, please. Tell me, you're buying it because it plays hundreds of fun and challenging games, right? Uh, no. The Atari 2600. You don't need me to tell you that this console has quite the legacy to it. While it wasn't the first home game console ever released, it would be hard to argue against the notion that it was the first successful one. Where most of its contemporaries could only claim to have a few different cartridges available, Atari mopped the floor with its competition by having hundreds of games to choose from. To make a long story short, it's more likely that somebody who grew up in the late 70s and early 80s remembers Atari over something like, say, the Fairchild Channel F. Honestly though, this massive success is probably the only reason that the Atari name is still around. Look, I've never tried that new VCS system that they just put out, but I somehow doubt it's even making a dent into Sony or Microsoft's sales of their new hardware. Just call it a hunch. Let's face it, the only market they can have any success in is nostalgia, and with all of the mini consoles that have been coming out these past few years, it would make sense for Atari to tap into it. But what if I told you that Atari was doing it before anyone else? Allow me to introduce you to the Atari flashback line, which began in 2004, over a decade before Nintendo released the NES Classic. Almost 17 years later, these consoles are still gradually being pumped out, which if nothing else really says something about the power of nostalgia. I've bought a few of them myself, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at some of them. I had originally intended to purchase and cover all of them, but I don't like throwing money away, and I also feel it would become too redundant given the nature of Atari games. So I picked out a few that I believe would best represent how the line evolved over the years. Those being the original Atari flashback, the second one, the Portable Deluxe, and the X Deluxe. Without further delay, let's dive right in with the first flashback from 2004. Looking at the console itself, you may find the design odd as it doesn't resemble a 2600 at all. Rather, Atari decided to start things off with a console inspired by the later 7800. Even the controllers resemble those of the 7800. I don't know why they thought designing it this way was a good idea. Don't get me wrong, I have nothing against the 7800, but to pretend that it's anything close to iconic would just be delusional. Most people wouldn't recognize this thing just by simply looking at it, but I guess the games touted on the box were enough to catch people's attention because, as far as I could tell, this thing sold pretty well. The system came packed with two controllers, an AC adapter, and composite video with mono audio cables. Well hey, at least it isn't RF. Built into the system is a selection of 20 games, and for the most part, they're... fine. Look, as much as I respect the history of Atari, most of the games prior to the NES era just can't keep my attention for very long. So if you're expecting long and in-depth reviews of each game included on these systems, you're just not getting it here. The standout games included in this system are Saboteur, which was an unreleased game, and Food Fight, which, at least to my knowledge, has never been re-released since. I could be wrong about that, and I'm sure someone will let me know, but I've personally never seen it on any compilation disc. The rest of the games are standard Atari fare. Anyone who grew up playing these games would probably be able to muster at least an hour of enjoyment out of playing them before promptly unplugging the system and shoving it in the closet for 10 years. I mean, who needs Elder Scrolls? when you have Atari Adventure. Anyone who has played these games on their original hardware may notice some discrepancies here, and that's because this system isn't based on 2600 hardware, nor 7800 hardware. I'm not exactly a hardware guru, but to the best of my knowledge, this system uses the same chip used in many plug-and-plays of the time, and as far as I understand, it's somewhere close to the same specs of the NES. So what this means is that every game in here has been ported, or maybe even built from the ground up for this specific chip. It's pretty impressive to think about in retrospect when you consider the fact that we currently live in an era where all devs have to do is throw emulators and ROMs together into little boxes. While the effort is certainly commendable for 2004, unfortunately this still isn't exactly an ideal way to play any of these games. I know the controllers are recreations of the original 7800s, but they were never comfortable to hold with a grip more like a remote and awkward button placements on each side. And even if they were comfortable, 
Games like Warlords and Breakout are practically impossible to play with this controller, and despite using the same connector as the original consoles, no other controller will work when plugged into it. At least you get a pause button, that's pretty nice I guess considering the 2600 never had such a luxury. So while the original flashback was a neat oddity for its time, I really wouldn't say it has that much appeal unless you really like the look of the 7800 then it may be a nice display piece, but I wouldn't say it has any practical use in the year 2021. And with that said, I think we can move on to the Flashback 2 released in 2005. Now this is one that I have a little personal bias towards as I received it as a Christmas present the same year it came out, and I spent so much time playing it with my parents. Neither of them were gamers, but you don't exactly need to be one to play these simple Atari games. Unfortunately, I no longer own that specific console, but there are certain certainly cheap and plentiful on eBay. Obviously, this one actually resembles the original 2600, even to the point of having the controller ports located on the rear. Hey, points for authenticity, I guess. Though it has to lose some points in that category as well for using plastic buttons instead of the iconic switches. I get it was probably cheaper to manufacture this way, but if you're going to put the controller ports on the back, you might as well go all out. Just like the last system, you get two controllers that are nice and fresh 2600 joysticks. Sure, they're not the most ergonomically well-designed things in retrospect, but I'll take them over the 7800 controllers any day. You also get an AC adapter, but the composite video connection is actually hardwired into the system, which is a little concerning, but over 16 years later it seems to be working just fine. So, I assume it's wired well inside, unlike most plug-and-plays were. Perhaps the biggest improvement over the previous console, however, is the increase in built-in games. This thing has a whopping 42 games built in, and that's partly because they were able to include a selection of games from Activision, who were arguably the best third-party developer for the 2600. While it definitely still has a lot of the bleh Atari games that you get bored of after 2 milliseconds, there's a pretty significant number of games here that are actually really fun. Among them are several homebrew games and hacks made specifically for this system like Atari Climber, which is an addictive score chaser, and Asteroids Deluxe, which is like Asteroids except IT'S A MESS! Even with the abundance of new content, however, it still probably won't have that much more appeal than the previous flashback. But you really can't say that there isn't anything of substance here. Also, unlike the last system, the Flashback 2 actually runs off of a chip based on real 2600 hardware. So you're playing these games as they were intended, right down to the weird video signals. On top of that, if you're skilled enough, you could even wire in a cartridge port. I'll link a site with instructions for said mod in the description if such a thing piques your curiosity. After the Flashback 2, there wasn't another system released until 2011 when At Games acquired the Atari license, and ever since then they've been steadily releasing new revisions of the console. On top of this, they also started releasing handhelds, and this leads us to our next system, the Flashback Portable Deluxe. You might recognize the look of this system if you've ever owned one of the infamous At Games Portable Genesis consoles, and it's pretty obvious that this was made on the cheap. I think it would have been cool if they had made the console resemble the Atari Lynx and include at least a few games from that system alongside staple 2600 games, but alas, there's clearly no real nostalgia market for the Atari Lynx in the first place. Anyways, it definitely doesn't feel premium, and the D-pad is simply awful. Normally this would be enough for me to dismiss this device entirely, but we have to remember that we're talking about Atari games here. So I don't feel like standards have to be quite as high. The system can be charged via mini USB and also includes a composite video cable. It has no multiplayer functionality though, so I can't imagine why anyone would choose to play it on the TV, but it's still nice to have the option. This one comes packed with 70 games, and you can add even more ROMs by inserting an SD card. So unless you care about multiplayer, this may end up being the only flashback you would need. As far as the built-in games are concerned, it's mostly the usual suspects, but this time around there's a small selection of Namco games included, those being Dig Dug, Galaxian, and Pac-Man. It probably sounds brazen for a company to re-release the 2600 version of Pac-Man, but as you can probably tell, that isn't the case here as At Games opted to not incite the next video game crash by including a homebrew port that more faithfully recreates the arcade experience. 
And this port is actually really awesome. It's so cool to see homebrew projects be officially endorsed. We also get Konami's Frogger included, but it's not the original 2600 version either. In fact, it's not even a 2600 ROM. I'm not sure what version of the game this is exactly, but it's just really weird that they chose to present this particular game in this way. But the only reason I could think of for doing so is that the original 2600 version was developed by Parker Brothers, which meant there was probably some weird licensing issue. Other than that little oddity, which isn't even that big of a deal, this might actually be a contender for the best one yet, mostly just due to the fact that you can easily add more games to it via an SD card. What more can I say? It's a handheld dedicated to playing 2600 ROMs. If that sounds cool to you, then it may actually be worth tracking down. So now we can look at our final system, the Flashback X Deluxe, which as of the writing of this video, is the newest system available. This iteration saw a major overhaul in the design of the system. It was released alongside the hype of the other mini consoles, and I'd say it fits right in with them. This also means that we finally have a system that uses HDMI, so we can kiss those crappy composite cables goodbye. Also, just like a real 2600, the X Deluxe has real functional switches. It is, for all intents and purposes, a true miniature 2600. With 120 games packed in and HDMI connectivity, logic would dictate that the X Deluxe makes all of the previous flashbacks obsolete, but unfortunately, aside from the physical appearance, At Games really dropped the ball with this one. I'm not sure if I just had a defective unit, but there is absolutely no sound in any of these games, except Decathlon for some reason. Oh, Frogger has sound, but just like the portable, it's not the 2600 version. Space Invaders is also included, but it also uses some weird version that isn't the 2600 one, which is really strange considering how iconic the 2600 version is, there can't be any licensing issues as Atari developed that version of the game, so who knows why it's like this. All that said though, assuming that my unit is defective with the sound, there's still another issue, and that's with the controller. It's very unresponsive, and unlike the Flashback 2, you can't use any other controllers, as the included controller has buttons on it that are necessary for accessing menus and such. You would think with modern technology, making an emulation box for the 2600 should be an effortless task, but At Games somehow managed to mess it up. At least it'll look nice next to your other mini consoles. So at the end of the day, I have a hard time recommending any of these systems to people who don't have any nostalgia for Atari. Most of the games included on these just don't personally hold my attention for very long, and even if they did, there are several Atari compilation discs out there for modern consoles that I imagine would deliver a more enjoyable experience than busting out these dedicated consoles. If I had to make a recommendation though, I would say if you want an authentic 2600 experience without having to buy an original console, go for the Flashback 2. If you want the option of portable play, then go with the Portable Deluxe. Otherwise, these probably aren't worth owning for most people, but I have to say it's pretty admirable that this line of consoles has lasted for so long. I have no idea if At Games will put out any other flashbacks, but if they do, I hope they'll figure out how to get the sound to work. Also, I hope they add in Custer's Revenge.